Hello, welcome to Switched On, Paul speaking, and today we're taking a bit of a deeper dive into Super Mega Baseball 3, which came out uh, today, yesterday, who knows what that is anymore. Uh, it came out this week on the Nintendo Switch from Metalhead Software. Um, had a look at this one the other day, so check that video out. I'll leave a link to that somewhere, some impressions and some gameplay. Today we're going to focus on the franchise mode, uh, which is new for this year. Uh, previously you were able to play Seasons in uh, Super Mega Baseball. This time around you can play multiple year franchise modes. Um, I'm just going to go into a custom franchise first, just to show you how this works. With a custom franchise, everything works exactly the same as the main franchise, so you can do stuff like uh, trade players, well, trade them to a free agency anyway. There's not actual team-to-team -team trading, but you can uh, pick up free agents and trade your players away. Um, there is the, obviously the playoffs. You've got player development, training, all that kind of stuff. But if you play the official franchise, um, it's locked to using just the official teams and uh, the settings are kind of uh, preset for you. If you do a custom franchise, you can still do all that good stuff but you can change all of these settings. So you can reduce the number of games in the season, uh, 16 as a minimum, even change the amount of innings in a game, which is really useful, because you know I don't have a lot of time, so it's good for me to be able to maybe play a five inning game. You know, realism be damned. I'd, I'd love to play nine inning games all the time, but it's just uh, not realistic. Uh, you can change the games in the playoffs and the amount of teams that make it into the playoffs and uh, choose which teams go in. So let's try and set ourselves up is the uh, saw teeth team and there you go you're into your franchise uh, as i say everything's the same as the official franchise the only difference is that you can change those settings at the start and you can now simulate games as well if you don't fancy playing the game you can just simulate the result which you can't do in the official franchise so pretty decent stuff um i mean i could come out and show you the official franchise let's try that as well it's not actually much different. I've deleted the franchise I had running so you could uh, see what the settings you could change here because you can only have one franchise going at the, at the time. Uh, we can have a short, medium or long um, season. And it does tell you there, but the uh, player development, aging, etc., progress differently depending on how long your season is. So if you have a short season, then that kind of stuff's accelerated, which again is really good because it kind of keeps it semi-realistic. Now players are going to age quicker um, in the shorter franchises and um, so yeah you can pick from any of these official teams I forgot to mention actually in the custom franchise you can pick from your custom teams as well that you've made up or you can just import all of the official teams and then, even then you can edit them once you're into the game in this official franchise mode here the standard franchise um, you can only pick from the official teams and you can't edit anything about them so let's just pick a team here and have a little bit of a a closer look through the franchise mode. So look at the Nemesis team. They look quite threatening. Uh, so we've got the um, same options here. You can simulate the game, but you can't simulate your own game. Uh, that's the difference here. Uh, player development, probably be the first thing we'll have a look at. This is a really cool thing, a new feature in the game. Uh, these fill out as you play through the franchise mode. What these are are little uh, buffs or debuffs. Um, actually, we're the best place to start. I'm going to come back to that in a second because it all, all links into the economy. Now, the economy, you start with $140 million as your budget for the team. Your payroll is obviously all your player wages. Anything that's left over, so you can see there, the payroll surplus is $800,000. What happens with that is that gets split up over the number of games per season to give you uh, what's called player development funds that you're able to spend each week. You can see there at the bottom, it's sort of uh, the, the, the bottom half of this screen shows you that uh, our surplus is $800,000. There's 16 games in this season, which works out at $50,000 um, per game that we get given to spend. Now that leads, leads back here to the player development section. This is where you spend that money and you actually get given the money each game. So we haven't got that $50,000 yet uh, because um, it, you get granted it after each game you play. But you could apply these to the players. I think they're sort of randomly assigned, but you can see here two of our players. The first one, Chell Dangerfield, um, can go for the Bro Boom. 
uh, you can get a little bit of a uh, humorous explanation here. It says the energy drink that's extremely unsafe for children. Seriously, it will stump their growth. <laughs> um, and uh, it tells you what buffs you get here. So it gives me plus three or plus eight to my power, plus four or plus 12 to my contact, and a 15% chance to gain a trait, which is the power versus the right-handed pitcher trait. What happens when you buy this, and I can't buy them yet because I can't afford them, but uh, what happens is that um, it, you kind of get a dice roll type of thing. It's not actually a dice, but it's like a, a symbol that flips around to sort of give you that random chance. So for each of those uh, upgrades, you're going to get a dice roll. So it's either power, you're either going to get three or eight. There's a 10% chance of uh, getting either. Contact four or 12, 30% chance, and then a 15% chance on the last roll to get that trait added to that player, which is really cool. Um, there are negative traits as well, uh, but this one looks like another positive one. Meditation here for Brian Pickleford. Uh, clear your player's mind of all thoughts, let them find their moment with themselves, their bat and their glove. And you see that it gives them a two, plus two, or plus seven chance on contact, and plus one to their fielding. So these, this is another like nice strategic layer in the franchise mode that you can add these buffs to your players and uh, they just last for a limited amount of time. As I mentioned a little while ago, we've got this uh, free agency. So uh, here is a list of free agents. These will age and eventually drop off of the free agency. Uh, if you press the L button, you can look at your players. So you can uh, swap these out. You can see the overall rate in there, the red bar in the middle. So uh, Jock Sports here is an A+, Jackie Slam is an A+, Hitu Moon Shooter is an A+, and so on and so on. Far right hand side is their salary. And you've obviously got to stay inside that $140 million salary cap. Um, you can obviously push up towards that, but then you lose uh, the player development funds that I was just talking about. So go back to the free agents here. You literally just pick uh, a free agent to, to sign and swap them out with one of your players. You've got to be looking for the ones with traits. You can see here, Briggs McGirdle. Uh, it's got two traits. Uh, Steeler, you can actually go across and see it. Steeler, so speed boost when attempting to steal a base and a utility player. No fielding penalty when played in a secondary position, which is awesome. So he's a shortstop and he can be an uh, outfielder as well. Pretty cool. But the, the these uh, free agents will often, especially the better ones obviously, will cost an arm and a leg. See here the best player on the free agency at the minute, Angel Walsh, who's a shortstop, uh, A-rated shortstop. And he's a 26, bats left-handed, but 26.2 million salary. If you compare that to our players, our, uh, you can actually sort these columns if we sort by salary. Our highest paid player is Jackie Slam at 14.9 million dollars. So you can see you've got to uh, be careful uh, with your salary cap. So that is the signing and releasing. Uh, we've looked at the economy, so just a couple of the other options. They're just basic stuff really. Uh, my team, you can change your roster around. You can also edit the players here. You've got this editor. I don't think you can edit them in the career mode, can you? You can. I wasn't sure if you could. Um, so yeah, you got their head, body, the gear, and their swagger. So like their walk-up music and their back starts and stuff. So. You can actually go in and tweak these. You won't be able to tweak their abilities, is the only thing. Soccer for the uniforms as well. These cards, I think I showed you on the last video, they don't really do anything. Just serve as like a little, a, a nice little feature, but they don't actually, uh, you can't click on them to view anything. Uh, a lineup, you can change your lineup here, which is fine. Substitute players out with a bench. Team stats when the season gets going. League leaders, that kind of thing. And again, columns are sortable. Team visuals, you can change your... Let's have a look at see if we can change the logo. Change the... Uh, let's just change it to something else. Change it to an A. And there you go, you can see the, uh, the logo has changed. Really, really cool. Uh, editor in total like to edit the uniforms and edit the logo great deal of detail you can see here loads of layers available 
I'm not very creative particularly, so there'll be some great stuff from uh, some very creative people, but that's, I, I'll have a little muck around in it, but I won't be uh, seriously uh, looking to do anything now, I'm just not creative enough. And then finally is Team Photo, which again serves as just a little Easter egg really, there's no, nothing really, um, no purpose to it. Don't want to set those changes. Uh, team schedule, obviously just the uh, matchups, season standings, you've got your leagues, divisions. You've got a wild card there for qualifying for playoffs, which is really cool. And then the economy, which you looked at, league leaders, there's nothing there yet, but again, that'll be like, you know, most home runs, batting averages, and that kind of stuff. And then just a summary. On the right hand side, you've got news that will start filling up, and we it's actually really useful because it starts um, telling you if players are hot or cold or got injuries, anything like that. Also, general uh, news from around the league. Let me show you the upcoming game. So, let's, I, I probably won't play a game. Um, maybe just dip into a, a few little bits of gameplay, but I'm not going to sit here and play a full game during this video. It's not what this video is about. Let's simulate the CPU games. You can skip all those with the Y button. Up to our match. So you see now, unlike on the custom uh, franchise, you, we can't simulate or watch this game. We have to play it. So you get to pick your lineup. What I'll do is I'll jump into some gameplay, just probably play an innings just so we can round this out with some gameplay, if that's okay. So I'll come back in a sec. Right, so welcome to the match. We're just gonna have a, a probably just one innings, as I say, just to get some gameplay on here. If you're not interested in watching the gameplay, you're just here for the franchise mode, then thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the, uh, the look at the franchise mode. Remember to leave me a comment below if you're picking this one up or you have done, let me know what you think of it. We're uh, up to bat first here. Oh, I just nibbled the outside of the plate. Oh, that was a slower one. Caught out a little bit. That's a good pitch. Two outs we got here. Oh, and that was a late reaction. And that's going to get down for a run. Oh, for a, a run, for a hit, a run would be a fine thing. So we're on first base. It's a Hitu Moon Shooter. That's curveball in there. Ooh, and that felt good, but it's gonna drop for an easy out, and that's my three outs, so we'll be up to pitch. Oh, it's sticking up. Billy LeBoink. Look to this yesterday, he's got a trait. If we look at this, he's got the high pitch trait, so power and contact boost when targeting the upper half of the strike zone. So I will certainly be aiming to keep my pitches low in the strike zone. So he doesn't get that boost. Dropping a curveball there, that's a nice one. Keeping everything as low as we can. Okay, let's see if we can tempt him into one. Yeah, he's gone. Frozen out. Uh, who's up next? Handley Dexterez. I must say the addition of the uh, PA announcer is a really nice touch. A couple of traits now for Henley Dexterez. So he's got a tough out, plus 25 contact when batting with a two strike count. And uh, he had that utility as well, didn't he? No fielding penalty when uh, in a second position. We looked at that one on the free agency. An easy out at first base. So two outs. Could be Kingman steps up. This could be the uh, last action of the B Wolves. But again, thanks for watching. 
really appreciate it. Hope you uh, got some uh, benefit out of looking at the franchise mode. So I spend most of my time. Might do another video uh, about the uh, the multiplayer. I'm sure people will be interested in that. The uh, the pennant race mode. If there is anything else you want me to have a look at, I'm still going to be making videos for the next few days on Super Mega Baseball. And that indeed is the last out. So there we go. Thanks very much for watching. Really appreciate it. And uh, I will look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks everyone. Bye bye.